What's up, everybody? It's Mikey B of Mikey B Cards here to give you a recap of the 2019 National. I've been wanting to make this video ever since I got home, but I've been absolutely swamped with uh, catching up with my family and friends, uh, getting all my stuff uh, kind of organized, doing all the game changer breaks. Uh, it's just been absolutely nuts this week. So here it is, uh, almost a week since the show has been uh, uh, finished and uh, I'm now making my recap. So I'm super excited to share some fun stories and some things I experienced about the show. It was so great meeting so many of you in person. That was seriously my favorite part of the show. Had a great time, was able to pull some big cards. I'm going to share a couple of them with you here, talk a little bit about the highlights and hopefully share some funny stories. So thanks for watching. If you like what you see, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And also in the comment section, if you did go to the show, please write down what your favorite part was, either meeting somebody or whatever it was. What was your favorite part of the show? I'd love to hear from all of you around what made the Nationals so special for you this year. So I've got these kind of divided up into a couple of different categories. So let me just kind of walk through a little bit about some of the my favorite parts here. Um, when it comes to uh, the beginning of the show and, and really all the way throughout, what I really, really enjoyed was just meeting everybody. Um, I got to meet so many people from Twitter and Instagram, people that have participated in my breaks, people that uh, were breakers that I have participated in their breaks, uh, got to catch up with old friends. It was just so awesome. Got to meet some card shop owners. Um, really, I mean, I could have two weeks at the show and still not catch up with every single person that's there. But it was so great, great meeting most of you um, at the show. It was awesome. Um, part of meeting uh, all of you, which was really neat and completely unexpected, was uh, some of you were nice enough to uh, bring me cards, which you, you totally don't have to do. That was such a pleasant surprise to those who did. I know that I brought a couple of racks with me uh, to give to some people, including a whole slew of kids packs that I put together that we were handing out at my LCS's table left and right uh, anytime a kid walked by. Um, but some of you did bring some, and I uh, just wanted to share one card in particular. Uh, there were many, many uh, cards that were, were shared uh, via Rax, and I couldn't appreciate them more. Um, this one really stood out, though. This was given to me by, uh, by uh, Nate and Michelle. Uh, Nate and Michelle have been uh, breaking with me for a while. Two of the nicest people. Uh, it was so great, uh, great meeting them and their son. Um, just, I mean, I was flabbergasted. This is such a cool card. It's an Andrew Luck zebra card these were one a case in select uh this last year andrew luck being my absolute favorite player uh that's currently playing right now uh and they were able to score this i'm not sure at a break or they opened it in a pack and they brought it to the show and they gave it to me and i mean i, I like almost cried man it was so awesome uh i was just floored so this card is super super special to me um, I'm debating about what to do. I, I might grade it just so I can have it slabbed. Um, or I might just keep it in this one touch. Either way, it's going to stay in the collection for a long time. Uh, a really, really cool card. I just love the zebra print look. And it's my favorite player. So to Nate and Michelle, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I really do appreciate it. And to everyone else who brought cards, like I said, that's not something that you have to do. Uh, but you were nice enough uh, to do so, and I was glad uh, to, to give away some cards myself. Um, I did make my way over to the Breakers Pavilion. Uh, that's always a, a, a favorite place of the show for me, uh, just so I can catch up with everybody, um, see some of those Breakers that I admire or have done breaks with uh, in, in the past. Uh, so uh, it was really, really great to catch up with all of them. Uh, I did meet a new Breaker, not new as far as like, you know, on the web. He's actually been around a while, but um, I decided to participate in some of his breaks because he had uh, a product that I was interested in, and that was the 2019 iMac Collegiate. And he had the um, the lines available in a couple breaks. And so I met with Brian Wolf of Wolf Cards Breaks. Couldn't have been a nicer guy. Uh, and I said, hey, I'd love the lions in those uh, three cases. Can I grab them? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, all right, but there's a caveat. is, And that is if I hit a Hawkinson RPA, which is what I'm shooting for, I was like, you got to send me a message. And he's like, all right, I can do that. And uh, so, you know, about an hour later, as the first break started, um, I checked my DMs and lo and behold, there it was. So my very first TJ Hawkinson, a true RPA from Immaculate Collegiate, uh, just an awesome card. On card auto, got the Iowa jersey uh, piece. I was just so super pleased uh, to snag that. So thanks, Brian, for uh, doing that for me. Uh, and, and pulling that. 
uh, during the break. So got to meet and see a lot of great people as well. Uh, my friend, uh, an original G from Instagram, uh, Steve of One of One Card Shop, CK over at Top Shelf Breaks, Rich, uh, Rich Layton, Austin from Platinum, uh, and so, so many more. I hope I'm not forgetting <laughs> some people. Obviously, there were a ton there, but some just some great uh, places. The Breakers Pavilion is fun because you get to see breaks live. You get to see how these professionals are set up. I don't know how they do it. I mean, there's so much noise and there's so much going on. I, I just can't fathom being able to like break, sort, do everything right there while like hundreds of thousands of people are around you all the time. So kudos to those that could get it done. Um, I did a ton of the Panini Box Wars. Uh, I came very, very close to winning one, but I did blink this year. Uh, I was really, really uh, hoping for one victory. We did one that was uh, Panini Prism Draft. And I've been talking to Kevin, the guy behind the counter at Panini, around like, hey, what, you know, what do you think you're going to call and so forth. And he knows I'm a big Iowa guy. So we, uh, we start the box wars and he goes, all right, uh, the lowest numbered Iowa Hawkeye card. And I was like, this is mine. This is mine. There's no way I can lose this. This is karma. I am going to get a low numbered Iowa card and I'm going to win this box break. Uh, so lo and behold, I did not have a numbered Iowa card. In fact, I didn't have an Iowa card in general. In fact, I'm pretty sure nobody had an Iowa card. So Fant and Hawkinson were in that set, but nobody had them. So they went to the second category, and that was lowest numbered mascot card. So I'm flipping through, I'm flipping through, you know, and I have one. And I'm like, yes, this is great. And it was uh, Bucky, uh, Bucky the Badger, so the Wisconsin Badger. I wish I had the card. I cannot find it. I wanted, for, wanted to show it for this video, but I couldn't find it. So I flipped to the back. It was numbered, and it was 26 out of 99. So I said, I got 26 out of 99. That's got to be low number. And I was super pumped because nobody had the cards. So people had mascot cards, but not numbered. And then, lo and behold, this, this young, young kid probably couldn't have been older than 10 at the absolute most, sitting next to me, decked out in Tennessee Titans gear. And I was giving him a little crap because, you know, I'm such a big Colts fan. He said, hey, I got one. And he flips to the back, and it was number 13 of 99. So the kid won the box wars. Awesome for him. I'm bummed I didn't win, but if anyone else was going to win, I'm glad a young child did. The worst part of the story, and you'll totally understand this if you're a Big Ten fan, is that the card that he had to beat me was the Ohio State mascot. So uh, that was just brutal. I lost when Iowa was the lead category and to an Ohio State card. I mean, you guys have to know that's just like devastating for me. Um, but I did do a ton of other box wars at Panini. They're a lot of fun. I highly recommend them. If you're going to open hobby boxes, it's a great way to potentially get a prize. They're a lot of fun. You get to keep all the cards. I was on a Nick Bosa tear doing the box wars. So I brought three of the cards that I hit. It, it, there were two in a row where I hit Bosa. So I pulled a Bosa auto out of the Contenders Draft Picks box wars. I pulled a really nice checkerboard, uh, red, white, and blue checkerboard out of the prism one. So this was the one that I lost. So I lost, yet I still think I won because I got this great card. It's number 22 of 99. So I'll have to call up uh, Kedrick uh, on that one. So kind of a cool card there. And then during the Elite Box Wars, I got a dual sig uh, Debo and Nick Bosa card. So yeah, pretty cool uh, stuff. I'm glad to add those to the collection. Um, I would have rather have won the prize, though, but it is what it is. I had a lot of fun. I got to do a lot of the box breaks with friends, so that was tremendous. So I highly recommend that if you go to Future Nationals, participate in the Panini Box Wars. They're a ton of fun. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is one of my absolute favorite parts of the show, and that is the exclusive silver and gold packs. To me, they are one of the most exciting things of the show. Um, there were several things that were uh, pretty... Um, pretty big during the first two days. Uh, Blowout was doing these Mega Mix boxes, which were insanely popular. And uh, people were asking consistently around, is Zion going to be in the silver packs? Nobody knew. Nobody was pulling them. You know, at the time, you couldn't really buy them in bulk. You could only get them uh, the silver packs through the redemption program, and you couldn't really get a lot of them. So a lot of like ifs, ands, or buts. 
Um, when it got closer to the VIP party on Saturday, though, the, the floor started getting flooded with silver packs. And uh, I personally love them. I don't know how many I've ripped. I mean, between the game changers and personals, I don't know, probably seven or 800, something like that. Um, actually, way more than that. Now that I think about it, uh, probably close to 1,000 to 1,200 packs. But I love the silvers. They're fun. I think you get some really, really cool cards. Uh, I, I pulled some really good stuff myself. Uh, and then obviously you got the gold packs as part of the VIP party. Those that hit the floor as well. So the, they sold for a lot more this year than they did last year. I think part of that was the Zion Fever. The other part was is that Panini did a great job in making some really cool cards. So, you know, in like the gold cards, they have these cracked ices. I just, everything about these cards in general, I just absolutely love. There's a pink disco refractor, but these are just really, really cool cards. They did laser, uh, laser. <laughs> They did laser etch cards. They did hyper. Um, they had a whole bunch of different variants uh, when it comes to the cards this year. I did pull a couple of really cool ones. Um, this one's going to the PC. Growing up, I was a gigantic Ken Griffey Jr. fan. So to have his autograph on a cracked ice card is like the dopest of dope to me. Really, really cool. It's 8 out of 10. Beautiful uh, card. His, his SIG goes a little bit off the sticker, but I, I don't even really care. I just think it's a really cool card. Probably one I'll hold on to. I'll put that next to my 89 upper deck that I've got somewhere. Uh, Lord knows where that is, and it's probably off center, but cool cards to have for the collection. I was able uh, to be lucky enough to pull two Zions. I pulled the Hyper out of a gold pack, and then I pulled a really super sweet Red Wave. Uh, this one's out of 25, 13 and 25. Uh, the hypers aren't numbered, but I believe they are a shorter print uh, than just the base card. So pretty cool. This one I'm trying to sell. This one I might hold on to for a little while or incorporate into something I'll do later. But was really happy about that. Now, the biggest pull that I had out of silver and gold packs, I don't even have with me because I've sold it. And that was um, late at night, I believe, on Friday. I think it was Friday, Thursday night or Friday night. I can't remember which. Um, I was opening up some packs with those that I was staying at the house with. So Cheddar Bob and uh, Brian Packer Cards 87 and I, we split up some silvers. We were opening them up. They were uh, making videos. Um, and then we decided, all right, everyone was pretty wiped. Let's just go to bed uh, and so forth. So those two go and, you know, I'm sitting at this giant like row of silver packs. I bought like a hundred at the show and I was just dying to rip into them. Uh, and I was like, all right, you know, show some resilience and just don't do it. Don't do it. Hold on to these. And I couldn't. <laughs> I was weak. What can I say? So I ripped into them. I pulled some cool stuff, some rated rookie uh, autographs, um, some other autos. But the coolest card that I got out of, the, out of everything was a LeBron James Pink Select uh, Prison Card 1 of 1. Um, an absolute gigantic card. Uh, I was just, I almost screamed. I, I think it was like one in the morning. I didn't want to wake everybody in the house up, but, uh, it, you know, in my mind, I was going nuts because I knew it was a huge card. It was an absolutely huge card. So I'd spent the vast majority of the next day talking to my friends around, you know, where do you price this at? I mean, I, I don't know basketball. It's LeBron in a Lakers jersey. It's probably one of his first Lakers jersey cards. And it's a one-on-one, -on -one, and I know basketball one-on-ones are like crazy expensive compared to football. Um, and so the the majority of people I talked to, and I got price ranges from, you know, four hundred bucks all the way up to like six grand. So you know, I have no idea where to price this thing or what to do with it. But um, a friend of mine, Ryan, card collector too, gave me some really good advice. So shout out to you, Ryan. I appreciate your help. Um, and he just kind of said uh, he would grade it. And he, you know, and then he kind of gave me some just some general advice to move it on eBay, which I followed and worked out very successfully. Um, I did same day grading through Beckett. First time I've ever done that. Ungodly expenses, 150 bucks to get your card same day. Um, now I would never, ever, ever, ever pay that for anything else. But with the LeBron, I knew that if it gemmed, uh, I would get much more money for it. Uh, so to me, it was worth it. And they had another option that was cheaper to grade it and get it at the end of the show, but I knew I wasn't going to be there Sunday. So I decided to do it the same day. So it did jam. I got a 9.5. I sold it about four to eight hours after I got home. 
um, and that pretty much paid for my trip. So awesome poll. I wish I had a picture of it or something. I do have a picture of it on my phone to, to keep for memories, but an amazing, amazing poll. Um, I did open a lot of other boxes. The other big card that I hit, uh, which I don't have currently with me uh, because it's out getting graded, is a, I hit a Baker Mayfield uh, variant autograph out of Contenders. Uh, the dealer behind us had uh, some really cheap Contenders boxes, cheap being relative, cheaper than what I found at most of the other big shops. And I was dying to rip Contenders because it's my favorite product. So uh, we did at the house, we pulled the Baker, everyone went nuts. I decided not to same day grade that, uh, mostly because I didn't want to spend another 150 bucks. But I did send it into Beckett through uh, through DK Cards, uh, who's a big Instagram uh, guy. If anyone's looking to do Beckett grading, uh, and I expect to get that card back here in like two, three weeks. So we'll see where it goes. Fingers crossed that one gems. That's going to the PC for a while, um, just because I didn't have any Bakers for a long time, and that is one sick card. So probably hold on to that and see if we get a Patrick Mahomes effect to it. Uh, or not. But I did get some other stuff as I was ripping through boxes. A lot of really cool autographs. Um, I opened some basketball stuff for the first time. So I got a, like a Kawhi Leonard on card auto. I did open Prism because I was kind of feeling Prism and Contenders were really the two boxes I really wanted to open at the show. Uh, so I did open one box of Prism, was able to score a Saquon Barkley. Uh, really super sharp auto. Cards in great shape. Um, might be something worth grading. I've got the blue shimmer out for grading right now. We'll see where that comes back before I do this one, but might hold on to this one for a little bit as well. So lots of fun opening boxes, not just at the show, but also at the house with the guys uh, while, I was, uh, while I was there. So I had saved some money and budgeted to buy some boxes, and I certainly did, and uh, it was a blast. Uh, the redemption line through Panini. Uh, I changed it up a little bit this year. Last year, I went really late in the show, like Saturday, and they had pretty much run out of all the really cool stuff. So uh, this year on Wednesday, as the show opened, I did it very first thing. So I was in line. I was uh, ready to go. I was the third person in line. actually got to meet some really great people while I was standing in the redemption line. In fact, uh, two of the young ladies who were uh, the first in line I saw throughout the show, they brought me like snacks. Uh, we talked about the VIP party. I mean, two of the nicest women I've ever met. They were so awesome. They bought us water while we were waiting in line because we had to wait an hour. Um, it was just so cool. Uh, and then got to know the, the guy in front of me uh, who was also a really great guy. Um, he's on Instagram. Uh, I'm gonna get his Instagram handle wrong, but he's Kaboom Collector or something like that. His big thing is he collects the Kaboom cards. Uh, and then it got to meet uh, a couple of really cool people behind me uh, who are also at the VIP party. So overall, it was just an awesome experience, even though I had to wait in line. So I had 19 redemptions in the system that were four months or older. None of them were good. <laughs> I mean, they were like, you know, Adora Jacksons and stuff from like pretty much last year's product. So I traded them all in. I was able to build enough credit. I got a black box. Um, black boxes contain one of ones specific to the show. And this is what I hit, uh, on card Jason Tatum from Absolute. You can probably just barely see the one of one national stamp on there. That's also on the back, one of one black box. So yeah, a one of one Tatum. So not too shabby. Yeah, uh, beats an Adore Jackson any day of the week. So that was really cool to do that. So if you are going in subsequent years to the show and you want to do the redemption line, my recommendation is do it first thing. Go straight there. Uh, because once that line gets six or seven people deep, it can be, you know, your your wait time till everything opens and then extra time to get up to the front. So do it early if you can, because that's when you can trade in for things like black boxes, high-end stuff. Um, Panini does a really great job there. I mean, most of the uh, redemption cards that I have were, were inexpensive cards but they always kind of uh, round up. So if it was like a $15 card, they would essentially give you like 30 to $40 worth of credit for it. So that's how I was able to get so much cool stuff, which is awesome. So thank you, Panini, for that. I really enjoyed that, that and had a great time. Got to meet some cool people. Um, trades at the show. I did bring a couple of cards, expecting to move them, um, some of them in trades. Uh, the two biggest ones that I made were really in our house. So, um, so, you know, I, I brought two cards specifically because I knew the uh, PCs of Brian and, and Bobby. 
And so uh, Brian and I had this uh, Marquez Valdez Scantling Nike swoosh card from Spectra, a one of one that, I mean, I, I got it at a really good deal and basically just hoarded it until Brian hit something that I knew I wanted because I knew he'd want to trade for it. So there were a couple other components of the trade that um, I don't uh, I don't have here in front of me, but this was really one of the big parts. So he has this really super cool Josh Jackson one of one from Classics. My kind of guy, Iowa player, one of one, really, really cool card. Uh, the MVS swoosh was was awesome, but um, you know, I was happy to get that to someone who will really, really appreciate it. So I love Nike cards, I love one of ones, I love Spectra, but uh, this thing is going to be great in my collection as well. So that'll go in the Iowa PC and it'll be there forever, much like I know the MVS will be there forever with Brian. So that was awesome. The other card I had was a really cool card from Honors. It was a David Johnson, I think National Treasures, is NT or Flawless? I think it was NT, his rookie year NT, on card auto to two. And I traded that to Cheddar Bob who brought a card for me because he knew I was a huge Andrew Luck fan. And I mean, I was just, I was floored. I, I love this deal. We were both so incredibly happy. Um, he was pumped because he added another great DJ and I'm pumped because I added an Andrew Luck with a rare inscription there. Uh, from Definitive, which really, when, when Tops was in the game, this was the this was like their flawless. It, it was amazing. So, a beautifully graded card. Uh, it came out as a nine and a ten. Um, you know, I could look at regrading because it's only a, a little bit of ways uh, from a better grade, but I don't need to. I mean, this this card's already encapsulated. It's gorgeous. It's an on card. You know, once again, three out of ten. Super short print. Uh, so, and three out of 10, three for 10. If you add those up, it's 13. That's my lucky number. So there you go. So, uh, really, really cool card here. Um, so thank you, Bobby, for that trade. And I hope you enjoy your David Johnson as well. Uh, the last story that I want to share is just about the VIP party. It was really fun. Um, so, you know, it, it's expensive to get in. I, I get it. It, it is, it is not for everybody from a price point perspective. I had a great time. A uh, couple of, of people I knew were able to go. I took somebody with me. Um, Brian and Bobby were able to go um, from their LCS. I met other people that were at their, uh, at the show uh, there. So I had a much better time this year because I knew so many more people at the show. But it was phenomenal. Panini does a great job with it. They had really good food. They had a DJ. Now I'm getting old, so like the, the music was super loud. So that, that was kind of whack. But... I mean, outside of that, it was just uh, the party itself was a, just a blast. Um, we got to meet many celebrities. I'm going to show you a couple autograph pictures here of a few. Um, they were all incredibly nice. Um, I really enjoyed myself there. We were able to pick up our gold packs and some other things. So um, to me, it was the highlight of the show, just like uh, the year before. So um, when I go to Atlantic City, and I will certainly be there for the National next year, it's 100% that I'll be going to... Uh, the VIP party. I'm hoping I can uh, bring some folks and some folks will meet me there as well. Uh, we did get to meet some celebrities. So do have some fun stories there. Mike Ditka was there. Um, Coach was looking a, Coach was looking a little older, you know, um, but he was super nice. I, uh, I told him that he's got a restaurant in downtown Chicago, his steakhouse. It's my favorite restaurant in Chicago. I, I love going. Amazing pork chops, great steaks, and the best mushrooms you'll ever have in your life. And so when I sat down to meet him, I just said, hey, Coach, I love your steakhouse downtown. I go every time I'm in Chicago. You know, you know. Thanks for keeping that open. I wish you much success in the future. And he couldn't have been nicer. He was, you know, he was like, oh, thank you very much, and shook my hand. We took a good picture, and then this was part of uh, the giveaways to going to the show. So really cool meeting the coach. Um, this was probably one of my highlights of the entire week meeting Ric Flair. Um, super nice guy as well. You know, I obviously I wanted to get him to woo, but. Uh, you know, Rick just had a stroke not that long ago, and uh, it was great that he was able to come to the show. Uh, but he was also super, super nice, uh, was very, very friendly to everybody. Um, didn't say much when we were in the camera line, uh, but was walking around and mingling with people out after his photo shoots, which not every athlete did. So I really appreciated that he did that. And it was cool to meet him and, and kind of put the the man and the face together, but I had a great time standing in line with this guy sharing stories about watching wrestling as a kid. My best story from the show 
was when I got to meet my childhood hero, Chipper Jones. Um, I'm not much of a baseball fan now, but back when I was a younger guy, um, I used to love it. Braves were my favorite team. I tried to watch as many games as possible. Uh, Chipper was my favorite player by far. Um, meeting him was awesome. So I was in line. I was getting ready to go to the front where uh, you, you hand them your phone and they take a picture of you. And, uh, you know, I just see Chipper. Uh, you know, there's there's this other guy that's kind of up there, but really all I'm focusing on is, is Chipper Jones is right in front of me, man. So I go up there. I shake his hand. I'm just like, Chipper, I just, I was like, Growing up, you were my favorite baseball player. I loved how you played the game. You know, uh, I just want to say this is an honor to meet you. And he was super nice. He was like, man, it's really cool. I, I appreciate that. And couldn't have been nicer, guys. So we snapped our photos. Now, as I'm leaving the photo area, the guys that I'm with are there. And they're like, Mikey, that was so cold. And I was like, what? What, what are you talking about? They're like, uh, I was like, I just met Chipper Jones. Like, I couldn't have been nicer, and, and he couldn't have been nicer either. And they're like, yeah, but the other guy, you, you didn't shake his hand or do anything. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Well, the other guy was Raphael Palmero, who was another baseball player growing up. Um, and he was there in the photo booth. And I had no idea. I mean, I, you know, you got to remember, I had no idea what this guy looks like. I didn't know he was going to be at the show in general. Is this like, huh? So when I went to shake Chipper's hand, I shook his hand and, you know, we kind of did like the bro hug kind of thing as I did the picture. I have my back to Palmero. I didn't acknowledge him. I didn't shake his hand. I had no idea who he was. I thought he was like Chipper's handler. So I felt bad because I'm like, oh, man, that is so incredibly embarrassing. But, uh, eh, you know, it, it, it is what it is. So uh, if. God forbid you're watching this, uh, Raphael. My apologies. Hopefully I can meet you some other time in the future. Uh, and then last thing I wanted to share was from the VIP party, I did get a, uh, a, a black box, a gem box, as they say, um, and was really fortunate to pull this really cool card here. So uh, an Otani to three with the, uh, with the diamond down below. So pretty neat card, much better than my card that I pulled uh, last year. So... All in all, I was really pleased with the party. And just in general about the show, it was a great time. So for those of you that uh, went, I don't have to tell you how much fun it was. For those of you who couldn't go for one reason or another, I hope you were able to live vicariously through myself or through others via social media and stuff. Um, if you have the opportunity to go to the National, go to the National. There is nothing like it, even if you're only there a day. And, and you'll be overwhelmed if you're only there a day. But... It's so great. I mean, it's very positive. There's lots of great people that you can meet. Every kind of card you could possibly imagine is there. Uh, you got great experiences and meeting celebrities and athletes, getting autographs. You can meet really friendly people through card shops across the country. You can do trades. You can participate in events like trade night. I mean, there's lots of fun stuff to do. So book your ticket for Atlantic City next year. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to that. Um, Vegas is kind of like my favorite vacation spot. So AC is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have some fun at the show and afterwards as well. So thanks for watching this video and allowing me to share my stories. Like I said, in the comments below, please share your favorite story from the show. I'd love to hear them. Uh, uh, Thank you for sharing those with me. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe as well. Um, we'll put out some more content soon. So thank you very much for watching. It's Mikey B. Peace out.